failed to shoot us in the paradise bar. Jesus slammed tequilas on the cross for you and for me. Yeah. Take a cruise, sandals full of sand. My head is spinning in circles and circles, and I hate the ocean. Get me back on the land where the tap water is free. Phony holiday, God take me away. Poolside full of tourists eating Chinese takeaway. But I've been chewing on magic roots and quaking in my boots. I'm waiting for the worst of it all. Hi everyone, Gary from Aaliyah Holly Productions. Uh, apologize for the long introduction, but I kind of like the footage, so I left it in here. Uh, this video, as many of you know, uh, we've been shopping for a catamaran now for a couple of years. Uh, and one of the catamarans that we've really been interested in over the course of the last year has been the ETA 14.99 built in Fano, Italy. The boat, hull number one, is in production as we speak, uh, and I had the opportunity to take a business trip to Europe uh, at the end of November of 2017, a few months ago. And uh, I took it, uh, I took the opportunity to go ahead and travel to the factory in Fano. And this video is about that visit and about the observations that I have uh, in the construction of the ETA and how the construction of the ETA, in my opinion, compares to uh, other boats that I've seen. I've taken other factory tours, uh, Fontaine Peugeot and Nautitec, for example. Uh, also, I have uh, quite a bit of experience in the boating industry over the last 40 years owning multiple boats. And uh, I have had the opportunity to visit many, many factories. So um, I thought that this would be interesting for those that are looking for a performance oriented catamaran uh, and uh, specifically perhaps interested in the ETA. So I took copious notes, took hours and hours of video of which uh, the factory has actually asked me not to share much of it. Uh, so, unfortunately, what we're going to have here is some narration by me. We're going to have some videos uh, of the factory and of the boat in production. Uh, I'll add a bunch of color. I actually have eight pages of, uh, of copious notes here. Uh, many of these notes I've actually made available on the sailing and cruisers form, which I'll provide a link in the description below. And um, but I thought I'd talk through some of the uh, the differentiators that I saw and the aspects of the construction, specifically of the ETA, uh, that I was very impressed with, and uh, um, and then give you just in general an update in terms of where the boat's at and where we are at in our process. So I'm a wordy guy. Apologize. This video might be a little long. Uh, so for those that are interested, hang in here. Uh, for those that aren't, please skip ahead. Uh, so here, here we go. So <clears throat> for, first of all, let's talk about um, getting to Fano. Fano is on the east coast of Italy. Uh, I actually uh, flew uh, to Rome through Zurich, uh, uh, spent the night in Rome, took a four hour train ride uh, from Rome to Fano. And, uh, Don Buckles uh, from Navigator Yachts, the US dealer for ETA, uh, met me there. Had the opportunity to tour around Fano. Fano is a great little city, a coastal city on the east coast of Italy. Uh, beautiful harbor, beautiful facilities. Uh, it's definitely a boating industry. In fact, Don refers to it as the Silicon Valley of the custom boat industry. And, and it's obvious that there are many manufacturers of boats there, very high-end boats. Uh, the facilities at the dock were at the at the harbor were excellent if you're thinking of buying an ETA and commissioning it there it'd be a great place to do it uh, you're 90 miles or so from Croatia you can sail to Venice 
uh, be a great place to take delivery of your boat. <clears throat> so let's dive into it. Let's talk about uh, some of the observations that I have in regards to um, the construction of the boat. So first of all, uh, the factory um, the factory was actually just in the process of being set up. Uh, ITA had uh, laminated the hull uh, and was in the process of laminating the deck at a different facility. Uh, they had just literally moved into their new factory the week before I got there. So if the factory looks a little Spartan, it's because it, is, it was when I was there. My understanding now over the course of the last couple of months, uh, the factory has gotten their per permits uh, uh, within the local jurisdiction there to operate. Uh, and they've started to build out the, the capacity of the factory. Um, so it was a little Spartan. The offices were a little Spartan, but it's a very impressive facility. Uh, and I think it'll, be, it'll serve ETA well as they uh, begin to build more and more boats. Um, and uh, in general, um, I was very impressed uh, with uh, the factory reps. Uh, I met with a guy by the name of Christian, Chris, and Leo uh, from ETA along with the U.S. dealer Don Buckles. And we spent the entire day, I spent the entire day going uh, through the boat at the factory, talking with the factory reps uh, about the options on the boat, touring the production facility for the furniture, uh, which was very close by, uh, and then also getting a good look at um, what they're doing from a lamination standpoint on the deck uh, and, um, and the cross beams and the bow sprit was in construction at the same time. Uh, since my visit, uh, the boat has progressed nicely. Uh, they has, has actually been delayed a little bit just because of some decisions that they had to make uh, from the that they had to have from the owner hole number one. Uh, and that delayed the delivery of the furniture. So the boat is now I believe scheduled to be launched in March. Uh, there's still some debate about whether or not the boat will make it to the International multi Hall Show in La Grand Motte um, in the middle of April or not. The likelihood is that they will not make that show. Uh, they want to make sure that the boat is well commissioned and tested. Uh, the boat is in consideration for multi Hall of the Year, European multi Hall of the Year, I think, or multi Hall of the Year. Uh, through Multi Hall Magazine, um, you, you can vote on it just by going to the website. All right, so let's go through some of my list, and I'll uh, try to talk only about the highlights here. Uh, so one of the things that uh, really jumped out at me when I had the opportunity to really walk around the hall uh, and see the shape of the hall, the form factor of the hall, uh, were a couple of key points that differentiated from many of the boats that I have looked at, boats such as the Nautitech and the Fontaine Peugeot and the Lagoons and th those types of boats, and, and including the Utamirs. So first of all, uh, the bow entry on the boat is beautiful. It's very fine. Um, uh, the bottom of the boat is very flat. It's got flat set sections which are carried aft quite far. Uh, the forward hull actually fills out uh, very nicely and the available space in the forward part of the hulls uh, in the living areas are going to be um, absolutely fine. Um, many performance boats have got very fine entries that are carried further aft and so the forward uh, berth for example in the guest hull uh, can be very small. In the case of the ETA, uh, the size of that forward berth is going to be absolutely fine. Uh, the bridge deck clearance uh, is uh, incredible. Uh, I was very impressed uh, with the available height from the bridge deck standpoint. Uh, and the overall proportions of the boat, the, you know, the boat in profile, the boat from the bow on, the boat from the stern, uh, is very um, uh, well uh, it's very good to to the eye. I mean, it just looks like a you know like a nice boat from an overall design st st standpoint. 
the hull is extremely fair. Uh, one of the things that EAT is doing relative to the finish of uh, the hulls is quite interesting. Uh, what they're doing is they're um, applying a very thick gel coat uh, before they do the lamination uh, and without a, uh, without a finish on it. So when it comes out of the hull, the gel coat is dull. And what they do is they go through a very tedious sanding process and buff the hull out. I have have just in the last, uh, actually today, I saw the first uh, photo of the boat fully buffed out. And the hull is absolutely fantastic. Uh, the attention to detail that ETA has had on the molds, the quality of the molds, the way the molds have been reinforced, uh, really indicate a very, very beautiful finish on this boat. Uh, let's talk about the structural design and build out of, of the boat. Um, widespread use of carbon throughout the boat. So carbon stringers, uh, carbon reinforcing around the, wind, uh, around the window openings, uh, carbon uh, uh, all through the bulkheads. Uh, so very liberal use of carbon throughout the boat. Um, these guys have got a lot of experience from a lamination standpoint uh, and a, you know, a build uh, from you know, a fiberglass build standpoint. Uh, and they have really, really paid a lot of attention to the layup scheduling, uh, the overall design analysis of the boat from a structural standpoint, uh, taking advantages of carbon where it can be most advantageous from a strength and weight saving standpoint. So I was extremely impressed with that. Then when you look at uh, the molds, the way uh, they've actually designed the molds. So for the hulls, uh, it's laid up in one piece. So the bridge deck, inner parts of the hulls, outer parts of the hulls, and um, the four deck areas are all laid up in one single uh, infusion. Um, absolutely spectacular, amazing. Um, the uh, this way that they've designed the flanges on the boat for the hull and deck joint, uh, for the hull and deck joins, um, and the fact that they're going to fully fiberglass that join, uh, not only uh, glue it, but fiberglass it as well, I think is going to be an exceptionally strong boat. Um, watertight cha ch chambers, uh, so they've built a tremendous number of watertight chambers chambers three in the bows, I think two in the sterns. Um, composite uh, bow sprit uh, with the cross beam uh, where no stays are going to be required for the bow sprit. And the bow sprit is available in two different lengths, um, a shorter length and then a longer length. Um, I think they're giving owners options if, if they want to keep the boat to 14.99. Well, actually it would be longer than that. But if you really want a longer sprint, uh, they can laminate uh, the bow sprit uh, to accommodate that, which will give you a larger four tri triangle for your downwind sails. Um, the attention to the chain plates is absolutely amazing. Uh, they uh, and there's a lot of video on this. I'm not sure that my 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 narration is matching to the video, so I apologize if it isn't. But when you see the video of how the actual chain plates have been uh, engineered and built and how they're installing those in the boat uh, was very, very impressive. Uh, the dagger boards, um, the dagger board uh, trunks and the interior supports for the dagger boards uh, is very, very impressive. Um, I know um, in, you know, this is uh, potentially uh, uh, an aspect of the Utamirs that I noticed, uh, which was quite a bit of play in the dagger board uh, in, in the trunk. Whether that's an issue or not, I don't really know. I haven't sailed in dagger board ca catamarans. But on the ETA, there will be uh, internal guides that, can be, or that are adjustable, which will allow you to really uh, make those da dagger boards lock into that trunk. Um, and then overall, um, in terms of the hull shape, uh, the overall weight of the boat and the load capacity. The factory tells me 
uh, that the, uh, the light ship weight of the boat, the target light ship weight for the boat is uh, 10,500 kilograms. And, um, and they expect to either hit that or be below it. Every component that goes into that boat is being weighed by the factory. Uh, they are weighing the boat uh, periodically to make sure that they're tracking to what the weight of the boat should be. So a lot of attention to detail in regards to the overall construction and the weight uh, of the boat. Um, okay, so um, one of the, a, a couple of very minor things that um, came out in the in the process of um, uh, of of being at the factory and talking with the factory reps that I thought was interesting and it demonstrates kind of the attention to detail that ETA is paying here. One is um, the gel coat. So typically uh, the boat is being is an epoxy boat uh, and typically gel coats are not used with epoxy boats. Uh, in this case they're using a epoxy compatible gel coat. Um, and then in addition, there is no chopped strands. Uh, so typically when a gel coat is applied, the manufacturer will have chopped strands on the, on the backside of the gel coat. In the case of ETA, they're not doing that. And that's one of the reasons why they're able to get away with that is because of the way that they're doing the gel coat overall and the type of gel coat that they're e using. And again, you know, you would probably never notice that or know that, uh, but it just demonstrates overall the tension to detail that ETA is paying here. Um, okay, and because the boat is epoxy, they're post carrying it. Uh, every penetration of the hull, uh, whether it be a through hull or a fitting, uh, is um, uh, is going to be uh, the core is going to be removed with special lamination in that area so there'll be no potential for water ingress into the core material. Uh, I was extremely impressed with the uh, number of uh, bulkheads, the structural bulkheads uh, that are going into the boat and the installation of those bulkheads. Um, uh, just very high quality bonding of the bulkheads throughout. There's no tabbing involved. Uh, they're glued and then bonded. Um, the details around the mast support uh, on the hull was extremely impressive. The stern, stern beam, uh, the, the details that have gone into the stern beam in terms of the structural bulkheads uh, and the section on the deck was very impressive. Uh, the way that ETA is approaching the mechanical runs, so electrical, uh, plumbing, uh, and uh, HVAC, all of the runs in the boat are going to be uh, within tubes, uh, which will make it uh, significantly easier for aftermarket runs of wiring and so on. Uh, and I think, again, it's just a demonstration of um, the attention to detail. Uh, they are using light wood, uh, you know, composite wood con construction throughout. Uh, overall, uh, based on what I saw at the factory, the quality of uh, the furniture on this boat is going to be really spectacular. Um, okay, things like uh, the, the details for the tramp attachments, uh, where the tramp attachments will be all external. Um, it's a very unique approach in, in terms of uh, attaching the tramps. I think it's going to be very interesting to see uh, the final product on that. Engine and mechanical access looks to be great. Uh, overall, the design of the mechanical electrical systems on the boat is really spectacular. The components, every single part uh, that um, the factory is installing is really, really high-end stuff. I mean, right down to the windlass, to the through hauls, and uh, on the video here, you'll see some, some of that. Uh, <clears throat> I thought uh, they had just literally mocked up uh, the guest head in the port hall, uh, which is going to be a single head, so a, a head with a shower uh, to serve both the, the bow and the stern uh, ca cabins. 
uh, on the owner side hull, uh, the head is forward and the shower is forward. Uh, Ito, when I was there, had just mocked those up in plywood uh, in order to um, make sure of the dimensions so that they could build the mold. Uh, that'll be all fiberglass uh, in. Uh, it'll be the fiberglass part that, that they glass in. Uh, and those are actually, uh, the last word I had from the factory, those are actually done and being installed. Um, it, the uh, area of Fano and the access to skilled labor in Fano is really, really good. As I said, it's a huge custom boat building area. Uh, and, um, and so, you know, getting uh, the resources that I really have experience and know what they're doing is quite good. Uh, and the factory is really paying attention to who they bring into the yard and who's doing what, and then the oversight associated with that work. Um, so those are uh, pretty much uh, the notes that I have. I've written about this extensively on the cruisers and sailors and sailing form. Uh, and again, the link will be below uh, if you want to read that. <clears throat> Uh, but here's here's a, a couple of updates. So one, from our, our standpoint, I think ETA is still um, a potential boat uh, that we uh, want to pursue. Uh, we plan to go back uh, to Fano once hull number one is launched and available to go sailing on. Uh, we will fully evaluate it, um, and uh, I'm very excited to do that. Uh, so that'll be sometime perhaps in the spring. Uh, we were we thought originally when uh, the boat was going to be in the International multi hull Show in April that we would go to the show and see the boat there along with some other boats that are being pre premiered at that show. Uh, but now it looks like that we may uh, either have to take a couple separate trips or um, or just tr travel to Fano to see the ETA. Um, I think uh, just in talking with the factory, talking with the U.S. dealer, uh, going there and seeing it firsthand, uh, I think this is going to be a very impressive boat. I hope that uh, it's perceived that way in the market, uh, and I think it's going to compete extremely well with boats like Utamir, Balance, um, uh, H&H, &H, uh, you know, for the real high end. Uh, flat out uh, performance boats um, are probably uh, a, a little bit ahead of the curve just in terms of um, uh, their approach to the building. But I think in the market of uh, Utamir's um, uh, and Balance, as I said, uh, in the Sea Wind 1600, for example, I think the ETA is going to be a boat uh, that if you're looking at these other boats, that this will be a boat that you'll want to see. Uh, and I'm extremely excited about continuing to follow the boat and to have the opportunity to see it and sail on it. And um, fingers crossed it'll work out for us and that we'll be able to actually purchase one. And if we do, I'll take you through that whole experience. So thanks for hanging in here. Hopefully this video was helpful to you and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye. And that water line is the ultimate. So that's 16.5, right? 14.5. 14.5 is, is the water line. So two. I, I maximum, yeah. Okay. So this would be the maximum water line yeah, at 14.5 yeah. tons. And, and that, it, it, uh, when you say 14.5 tons, that's 14.5 kilograms? 14.5. 14,500 kilos. Kilos, okay. Not uh, not pounds, so you got to multiply that by 2.4. Well, 14, 14, 14 would be 28, uh, it's, 30, 000, it's, yeah, it's 2.4, right? 2.2. 2.2 pounds per kilogram. Yeah. <laughs> and so, Kristen, what you indicated was that at the light ship would be about 10 centimeters uh, below that. The light ship would be. Centimeter lower. Okay. So it's 480 kilogram each centimeter. That means this is two centimeter. This will be 900 kilo less. Okay. 
So it's yeah, so it's 450 kilos yes, per per centimeter. Yes. Of immersion. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Great. You know, mm -hmm. layer by layer, and that's very a tricky work. Mm -hmm. And I how think, many I, how many layers of this carbon? Twenty-four layers. Of carbon. Twenty-four layers of carbon. Twenty-four. You see. Here we have uh, fiberglass and then we have carbon, fiberglass, carbon, because uh, it's not good to have only carbon, but you have uh, to, to cut the lines of the uh, carbon fiber with a square uh, fiberglass. And this is the reason why you have every four layers, um, yes, every four layers you have one layer of fiberglass here. And if you, if you see them, you can see them very well. With the light, with the light, you can see exactly the fibers inside. Wow. It's very beautiful looking. Mm. This one, there's a nice compression of this, and then, then we glue it this with the with the structure glue. We glue it inside, yeah. and then uh, outside we made already all the reinforcements. Right. And then right. we glue it in, and then we we make all the reinforcements like yep. we we saw on the yep. other side. Yes. And these are uh, put in the tube just so through compression? Going in and then turn it and then the, the, rudder the, post goes in. the rudder post goes in here. And you'll be able to replace these? Uh, yes, yes, yes. You, you take out the rudder, you go in, you, you turn them, then it, it falls down. <laughs> they are quite smart those ones. Quite who, smart. who makes this? This is a, a Jeffa, Jeffa. Oh yeah, they, okay. They have a huge campaign to replace almost all the other systems, all the French boats, because they have all metallic. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, bearings. They are making a really uh, huge campaign to, to put only this one, because they have never problems of rusty corrosion and everything like this. Now, do you, do you uh, have to, to lubricate this? No. No, 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 nothing. It's, nothing. Wow, that's amazing. This one are where you put into the aluminum, where you put the, um, uh, the sector, because uh, you, um, you have a reduction. When you have the steering wheel, you have a reduction to go to the rudder. Normally you have, or you have a gearbox, yeah. or you have a sector. The boat has uh, this it's half moon on the quadrant. Yeah, a, a, a quadrant. quadrant. A quadrant. A quadrant. quadrant exactly. Yeah. And uh, we have this in the middle. On the, uh, when you go down on the, on the, on the engine, inside we have this quadrant, mm -hmm. 50 centimeter, because from the rudder station we have two cables go to this quadrant. From the quadrant you go with a push pull rod to the rudder. You go with a push pull rod to the to the other side of the boat. Right. So all systems are independent. If you break a rudder on a system, you have still the other okay? And uh, this is the post you fix it on the deck. You see? Yeah, for also the same. For emergency steering, right? And uh, this is also the same. Yeah. And, Similar what you have on top of the of the rudder post, okay? Yeah. And uh, the load of the, the load of the rudder post is not supported by the by the bearings, bearings, but by the shape of the rudder because the rudder has the shape like yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. And you have the rudder post that there are yeah. and the surface of this shape is touching the case. Is touching the surface of the hull that takes the load. Okay. So it's not a problem what kind of load you, you put on the rudder if the hull is supporting this load. Yeah. Okay. And it's not the, the bearing that takes the load. Now, so on the top of that rudder, are you, are you going to put uh, like a, a Teflon? Yeah. You can put the, or a Teflon or Delrin or yeah. the fiberglass. Yeah. yeah. Whatever you like, yes. But it will be a couple of millimeters only. Okay. And if you push, 
Aluminum. And, and where is this go? This is uh, goes inside in the boat, just to, uh, where I told you. Where you go inside on the on the. I show you. So now on. this is uh, attached to the rudder post itself, right? No, 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 no. no. This That's is uh, completely separate. This is inside. This is completely separate. Oh, uh, got it. Okay. Yeah. I got this it. This is in the boat. We have the rudder station with the two cables. Yeah. Goes on the quadrant. Yeah. From the quadrant we have. Okay. Pin, yeah. It goes on the, other the push side rod. The boat, yeah. The push yeah. Rod, yeah. The push rod goes. That's why you get this key wave in here. That's exactly. Okay. This is the reason of this one. Yeah. And here we have on the left side also with the point to go to a small reduction box for yeah. the automatic pilot. And the automatic pilot we are using the same brand also because it the disconnected yeah. during sailing if you don't have any automatic. Pilot. Uh, but it's good because you, you have a, a good feeling of the on the rudder. Yeah. Because normally, if you if you're only system, it's still connected, so you don't have the. Case. But now the the autopilot is the the Jaffa hy yes. hydraulic uh, uh, the drive. It's electric. Electric, electric drive. Electric okay. Electric. Got. It. So it's it's kind of a worm gear uh, kind of drive, or. Uh, no, it's got a gear in it. Huh? The, the auto it's a gear. So. It's, it's like it's like you, you know the start of the car, the start, the electric start of yeah. the car. Yeah. It's similar. The pin goes in when you connect, clack goes in, you work the autopilot. Got it's it. Connect, clack, so it's like there's, there's no rods yeah. per se. You yeah. know exactly. Got it. That's it. It, then I see I see a big turning block, so that's for the steering cable. Yes, steering cable. Those yeah. are, we, are, are where we have the 90 degree to go from mm -hmm. the, the steering cables goes. Uh, yeah. Inside. Two or one. Yes. Okay. That's a beautiful setup. Yeah. Those are black water tanks. Oh wow. Tanks. Yeah. Okay. So fuel? Fuel yeah. 215 liter. Yeah. Okay. Yep. There's this uh, anti-splash fuel. Anti oh yeah. Anti-anti-siphon, uh, right? Because for not if, uh, if you have, uh, you know where. Uh, yeah, I know. The vents, they are inside the the, the anchor chain. Yeah. The anchor locker. Anchor, anchor, yeah, the anchor yes. locker. That's that's really nice. Yes, very beautiful. Yeah. And those are the black water tanks. And, they, are, and these are the ones that I'd want to get a little bit larger. <laughs> these are 80 liters. 80 liters, yeah. Well, eight. this is an, this is an 80, is it? 80. This is 80. 80. So this this is the larger. Uh, this is the already the larger. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, is 80 standard or is the 60 standard? 60 standard. Okay. 80, you can put 80. Yeah. You so like more or less? 80 80 would be fine, I think. 80 is how many how many gallons is that? Uh, well, it's two, three point seven five. Twenty twenty gallons, yeah, yeah. And we and what do we say the head the uh, two uh two uh, uh two ounces? Trust me, two less than two ounces. It was le it was less than a liter, oh, no, right? No. Or it's a liter of flesh or something? Yeah, one and a half liter per flush. One and a half liters per per flush. So with an eighty gallon tank, roughly you well, that's have eighty liter. Yeah. 80 liter and 1.5 liter per per foot per foot flush. Uh, Rule uh, 1,000. Four four total. Yeah, two in the engine room, two in the in the main bilge. Yes. Okay. And um, are will there be an option for manual pump on the bilges as well? Yeah, already. 
They snugged it. Okay. Two manual. Okay, so so one one for each hole. And will that will there be like a Y valve to select whether you're going to pump from the engine room or from the Fix it. You can go put the tube where you like to have. Okay. Normally, uh, a rubber tube, 29 millimeter, uh -huh. and you roll it and then you put it in. If we should make a, a fixed system, we have to speak about. But normally, it, it's a it's a rubber tube. Okay. The, the system of the uh, pressure pump. Yep. Fre fr fresh water? Yes. Okay. And uh, one one in each hall? Yes, correct. Okay. And Two then water heaters, one for each hall. Yep. Uh, the, the fuel. That's the fuel pump? Oh, yeah. Beautiful. It's very beautiful. That's yeah. The rock one. That's the bright one. That's yes. the exact right yeah. one. Very nice. Yeah, that's, that's a nice. So, and these will be two of them. Yeah. Yeah, it's and very good quality. It would be ones. easy aftermarket to install a, a, a second with bypass, uh, and uh, you can uh, we can do that from the beginning. Yes. The only thing I would recommend to add to this is uh, a pressure gauge. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So on the on the suction. But, Iraq, on the suction yeah. side. Iraq has already the double system with the, That's with right. the gauge. With yeah. The, yeah. So yeah, with switch. We can maybe take but with a, even on the single with the pressure yeah. gauge, yes. it'll help you see where, when, it, when it's time to check to clean yeah. your uh, clean or change the cylinders. Yeah. And you, you can actually set that up uh, for polishing as well, I think, right? You can do have some, some bypass. Well, they, there, there are systems that are fuel polishing where they have their own pump yeah instead of relying on, on the, the on the engine yeah, uh, yeah. The, uh, those are the water, water tanks wow wow let's tell them right now once these tanks are in they are in they're in yeah there's so, no getting them out without without a salt okay so yeah and the total capacity on the water again? 330. 330? It's, uh, each. Each. Each, okay. Yes. So 660 Liter, yes. Time yes. divided by 2, so 2.2, right? No, 600. No. One right. gallon is 385. 385. Or US Canadian gallon is 4.4. Or you uh, 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 British uh, is 3.825. And now the Wabasco is the air conditioning uh, yes. units yes. and and heater. Yes. yes. So is hole hole number one going to have both air and heat? Yes, this one will have both. It's the last generation. Uh, is the the newest system you can have now on the market. This one. And this is the the heat. This is now cool. 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 Okay, cool. got it. Uh, I have to take a look. If yeah, I it's find. okay, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. Three hundred thirty liters. Here, here's here's the heater. Right? No, that's not that. These are just the parts. The, these are the the vents. Uh, then we take very the, the best the tubes open on tube. Yeah. Uh, this is the some coil. This out one, this is the bigger one. That's what 12,000? 12, 12,000. 12, so that's one of two and it goes into the salon. Yes, two of them go to the salon. Exactly. And are they dual frequency? Dual uh, hertz? 5060? Uh, 5060, yes. 5060? Uh, yes. Yeah. 50, Good. Wow. It's just the start of, <laughs> of that stuff that you guys need yeah. to finish the book. Yeah. And now it goes forward quite quickly. Because, uh, videos you really got to be geeky about geek like me um, just thought I'd give you a quick update I've been 
working on this video off and on for probably the last six or eight weeks. Apologize for how long it's taken me to get this out. But uh, the progress on hole number one is really progressing well. Uh, I've included some updated photos here in the course of the video. I encourage you to uh, go and visit the ETA uh, site on Facebook. I'll provide a link here. Uh, and stay tuned. Uh, the factory is posting updated photos as, they're, as they become available uh, on their Facebook page. So pay attention to that. Also, uh, it's, it looks like that the ETA will not be in the Le Grand Mont show. Uh, they're just not going to have hole number one uh, ready and be able to get it to the show in time. Uh, it looks like the first show, the first public showing of the boat will be at the uh, con show in the fall. Uh, but the boat will be available uh, to view uh, if you want to travel to Italy to see it. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. I expect uh, videos uh, of hole number one launch and sailing and some additional reviews coming out uh, from uh, the, the magazines and so on. So anyway, thanks for hanging in here. Uh, I'm sorry for the length of time on this video. Take care. See you later. Bye. Come on, heaven ain't far. We'll do shooters in the paradise Jesus slammed tequilas on the cross for you and for me, yeah. Take a cruise, sandals full of sand. My head is spinning in circles.